going on you guys out of work again man there's nothing better in life if you're a nine to five worker than getting out of work so today just like I said yesterday I'm going back to see if I can't photograph some of those ducks in that farm pond it is a bluebird sky there's really hardly any cloud I don't even see any clouds to be honest with you a little bit of light haze at high altitude and contrails from jets that's about it that's all I see in the sky um, so equipment today I'm not gonna pull everything out of my bag while I'm driving as per my new safety first policy um, but I'm shooting with an EM1 that's gripped and I have the 40 to 150 f 2.8 with the uh, MC 14 1.4 teleconverter attached so 210 millimeters at f4 really really dying to get the 300 millimeter back in my hands uh, but I'm afraid that by the time I get one I think a lot of these uh, ducks will not be in my area so when I do get a 300 expect different birds than ducks hummingbirds is really what I'm after this year I've got my uh, my heart set on a couple of different photos I guess a couple of different um, compositions how about that of hummingbirds the campground that we have a seasonal site on uh, northwest of my home there are a lot of hummingbirds in the area actually there are a lot of birds in general so uh, Baltimore Orioles beautiful beautiful bright orange birds ah man gorgeous um, a lot of different types of wrens as well and um, yeah so expect birding as soon as the 300 arrives i'll try to shoot some sports and stuff with it as well but i think for me it's it's going to be a wildlife lens for sure although it'd be kind of fun to do some portraits with it i think too um anyways so i'm going to shut the camera off now i've got about a 15 minute drive until i get to the spot where the ducks are at i do have the um, hot shoe mount for this camera that i'm recording with right now so we'll get some Call of Duty first person view photography action I guess of the uh, the duck hunt I'm hoping to get some decent shots you know I'm obviously not shooting from the car I'm gonna be uh, walking into this field that borders the one pond where I saw the mergansers and the uh, the buffalo heads and hope that I can kind of sneak in on them a little bit I mean I'm obviously willing to crop in on a shot so I don't have to get right to water's edge but I'm thinking that if I can get low I would like to keep myself positioned low towards the water line I don't like shots that look like you're looking down on an animal um, I like to be at at the level at which the animals normally exist right so for ducks waterfowl you know you're gonna be right at water level with them um, you know and if you're talking about you know like a horse or whatever sure you know you can stand up I mean it have to be a shorter horse if I'm standing next to it to shoot it but you get the idea same same philosophy as shooting kids get down to their level it it offers a perspective that people don't always see you know everybody views everything most of the time from a standing position so when you can change your perspective and get down low for things that are low like kids uh, animals in the water you know small mammals what have you it offers a perspective that a lot of people don't get because they're not willing to get down low themselves to view those things so I guess if I were offering a tip which an unsolicited tip I guess today change your perspective to offer a point of view that people don't often see unless they're a photographer right I'm really shutting the camera off now I can blab a mile a minute so I'll see you guys in 15 minutes hopefully with some ducks in my sights I bet it didn't even feel like 15 minutes did it it did to me you guys got it made all you got to do is just sit there and wait a few seconds and boom here we are 15 miles later 15 minutes later whatever I gotta drive <laughs> but uh, that's no big deal. I, 
did see a juvenile bald eagle, which was in flight, so I couldn't stop. No point in even trying to uh, photograph that. Um, but that was exciting. Anyways. Alright, so here we are. I've made my turn. Now I just need to creep along nice and slow. Check out this other little pond. take you off of here. I'm not even, hold on, it's going to get busy for a minute. Woo, that was fun. I'm not even turning the camera off for this because I don't want to waste time. So, this is going to really annoy one person I know in particular, Bob Panic. All right, Bob. All right, lens mounted, camera ready. Notifications coming in. Okay, I'm shedding to shutter priority, 800th of a second. And get as wide open as I can get here, which is at four. Set the ISO to auto. Bring my exposure back down to regular. And set to burst. Let's do this. Yeah, they're those are all buffle heads out there. They like to swim. They like to go underwater, which is really cool. Oh no, not Bufflehead, Merganser. Where'd you go? Underwater for a long time. Very cool. All right, so I'll give you guys a little bit of video. travel quite a ways underwater. If I can get them to pop up. They actually travel quite a ways underwater. So as this Jeep drives by, I'm gonna walk over, maybe use them as a little bit of cover. I don't think I'm going to be able to get very close. They don't really like me. I 
almost wonder if I could just sit here for a little while. They might work their way back. I don't think it's because of me. They're just kind of playing around, just cruising all over the place. So I'm just going to sit here for a little bit and watch. And I'll shut the camera off while I do it because, well, I know you guys don't want to sit here and watch a big open body of water. And I do spot some ducks on the other side of the lake or pond. Okay. Now I kind of get what's going on. I wasn't paying close enough attention earlier. There's one female out there and four males. So that's what all the flying around and doing these laps around has been. I think they're chasing her around and I just didn't even notice that. And that's what all the uh, the display is out there. And I know you can't see it, but they're flapping their wings to where they're almost like standing up in the water. And now they're flying over to where she is. Yeah. It's mating season. Everybody's showing off. All right, so I've riled up some cranes. Really riled them up. Actually, kind of pissed off the whole neighborhood here. <laughs> Kind of not in the best position here either. Right on the side of the road. There goes the juvenile bald eagle. All the ducks are all freaked out. And he just landed up in that tree. Well, he's got everything stirred up out there. I don't know if you can hear all the ducks. <laughs> They're not too happy. And my buffalo head's right here, flying over. I don't even know why I shot that eagle out in the tree. And he's so far away. There he is. Very cool. He's up there a ways. No, nope. he can't. Well, center of the frame is the juvenile bald eagle. And maybe I'll share a picture. They're gonna be really crappy from this distance, but he's what spooked all my birds. Cool to see him though. All right, I'm out of here. Today was not necessarily a bust, but not a win. Get a couple more shots of these cranes. Even though they're not exactly exotic animals, they're still really cool and pretty.
I'll let this car pass before I go back to mine. Today's adventure is over foiled by an eagle. How often does that happen? <laughs> I can honestly say it's the first time for me. Thanks for going on me with Thanks for going with me on today's adventure. Thanks for going with me on today's adventure. Yeah, I can't talk. Alright. Wrapping it up you guys. I will see you tomorrow.